Okay, this is the second part of Centers, Relations, and Truth. In this discussion, we will continue our uh, topic about the sentence relations and also the uh, relation with the truth value in each sentence given. Propositions can be defined as the basic semantic content of a sentence. What a sentence says about the world. So we have talked about preposition, about proposition in our last discussion, and this is understood as the idea behind a sentence or some sentences. So for example, if I say I ate an apple and the apple was eaten by me, so the proposition derived from both sentences is the same. So the idea behind those sentences is the same thing. Like a proposition is labeled as small letter P. So small letter of P which stands for the uh, proposition. So when there is a sentence like I like apples, so it means that there is a proposition given here, one proposition, and when you have two sentences like I like apples and you like mangoes it means that there are two propositions here and we could label it as Q so the first proposition is labeled P the second one is Q and when we have three parallel propositions as given in these sentences I like apples she like mangoes and she likes oranges so we have P Q and R that's all what we will label for the proposition. Propositions have a truth value. So, proposition may be true or false. The truth value depends on our world knowledge and also a number of parameters. The, per the first parameter is the general content. So this proposition can be is true if the content is in line with our basic understanding of the world. And the second parameter is the speaker. In this parameter, the, pro the proposition may be true or false based on the speaker itself. So this is a very relative assumption given in this uh, parameter. And the third parameter is from the local or temporal context. So here, the proposition is only true if the sentence, I like apples, as I said in the beginning, is uttered by the person who likes apples. But the proposition can be false if the person doesn't like the apples. And so such propositions can turn into complex propositions. Okay, the propositions uh, can be seen from its analytic and synthetic truth. So there are truth in the proposition which can be analytic or synthetic. What is analytic truth? Analytic truth follows from the meaning relations within the sentence, regardless of any relationship with the world. So in analytic truth, the truth will be always true, as in we have in tautology. So my father is my father, so the truth will follow with the meaning relation. There is nothing given more in the sentences in the sentence. While in synthetic truth, the statement is true because it accords with the fact of the world. So we need to have the basic knowledge or we need to have the fact to prove that this statement or this sentence is true. So my father is a sailor will be syntactically truth if it accords with the fact that my father is a sailor. Proposition can have propositional logic. 
and uh, these are marked by the use of adverbs or conjunctions so we have some connectives here in propositional logic which are marked by the symbols of logic here so we have the connectives like conjunction the symbols of conjunction is using symbol like this which means blah 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 and blah 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 so we will read this as P and Q and then we have the second uh, connectives this is disjunction the relation of disjunction is OR the symbols we use is like this so we read it as P or Q and then the third connective is implication in implication we use the symbol like arrow here and also like this and it means that if blah 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 then blah 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 so this symbol will be read as P if P then Q okay the next connective is negation okay this is the symbol and the natural language for this negation is not so this symbol will be read as not P and an equivalence the symbols for equivalence are this and the natural language for this relation is if if and only if blah 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 then blah 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 so we can read this relation as if and only if P then Q okay now we'll see the truth value of the proposition we'll try to apply the concept of uh, truth value to the sentence like this we will check the truth value in this sentence so the house is on fire and the fire bracket are on the way the relation between the first <coughs> clause and the second clause or the first proposition and the second proposition is and or conjunctive so here we have P and Q what is the truth value given from this sentence okay we have table here in this table we'll put the proposition into true and false okay so we read this table as if P is true and Q is true then the relation between P and Q will be true so if the house is on fire and the fire bracket or are on the way so the whole conjunctive will be true if P is false and Q is true so if the house is not on fire and the fire bracket or are on the way so the conjunction will be false the relation will be false here and then if we make P into true and Q into false then the conjunction will be false as well because the house is on fire and the fire bracket are not on the way so it means that the whole will be false and how if the whole are false we have false for P and false for Q so P and Q will be false as well the house is not on fire the fire bracket are not on the way so it means that the whole conjunction are false okay the true inference will uh, the true proposition will give true inference and it will raise the entailment so entailment is any true inference from a true proposition 
The symbol for entailment is given with this symbol. So we'll read this as P entails Q. P entails Q if and if only P is true and Q is true. So we will have true information, true inference from true proposition. Okay, we have the sentence like this. The child killed the cat. The cat is dead. So P entails Q here. How can we prove this entailment? We have the entailment task. How to test the entailment? First, we need to find if P is true, is Q automatically true? So the answer should be yes. And then the second step is if Q is false, is P also false? The answer should be yes. Then in the third step, then P entails Q. If P is false, then Q, then Q can be either true or false. Okay, to make it more understood, we'll see the table here. Okay, we have the sentence here. The child killed the cat. The cat died. We need to prove whether these two sentences are entailment or the relation between two sentences is entailment. Okay, first we need to make the proposition P into true and we'll see if the Q is true also. So if the child killed the cat, then the cat died. So this is the first analysis for this sentence and then if we make proposition P into false, the result will be true or false. So if the child didn't kill the cat, then the cat could die or not because this is not, uh, this can be this is not the only um, reason why the cat could die. So if the child didn't kill the cat, the cat could always could the cat could also die because of other reason, for example, or perhaps it's still alive. Okay, now we have another relation. If we put Q into false, what is the result in P? So if the cat didn't die, the child didn't kill the cat. So that must be false and false. But if we make it Q into true, the proposition P can be true or false. So if the cat died, the child could kill the cat or not. So the only reason of why the cat died is not always by the killing of the child. So here, if the proposition Q is true, the proposition P can be true or false. So the cat died can be because of can be because of the child kill the cat or perhaps it died because of other reason okay now we'll see the truth value for synonymy in synonymy p and q always have the same truth value so in any situation in every situation the condition of P and Q, the proposition for Q, P and Q will be the same. So for example, if we make P into true, and then the result will be true as well. So let's 
see the example here. We have the sentence, he is a bachelor, he has never married. And then we put it into the third value table. So if proposition P true, then Q will be true. So if he is a bachelor, he has never married. If we put P into false, then Q will be false. If he isn't a bachelor, he has married. And then we make it into the other side. If Q is true, then P is true. So if he has never married, he is a bachelor. And if Q is false, then P will be false as well. So if he has married, he is an ambassador. So in synonymy, the true value will always be the same. Now we'll see the contradictions. The contradictions will be always in the different way. So if we put P into true, then Q becomes false. And if we put P into false, then Q will be true. And so in the other way. If Q is false, then P is true. If Q is true, then P is false. Okay, this is the last relation, that is presupposition. In presupposition, we should remember that if P is true, then Q is true. This is the concept of preposition. If P is false, then Q is still true. And if P is true, if Q is true, P could be true or false. So to check whether the relation of the sentences is presupposition or not, we can use this concept. Okay, in our last discussion, we'll see the example of the sentences here. We have two sentences and we will see whether these sentences are presupposition. Her husband is a football player. She has a husband. Now we'll see first. If P is true, then Q is true. That's our first rule for presupposition. So if her husband is a football player, then she has a husband. So this will be true. And then the second rule for presupposition is if P is false, then Q is still true. We'll apply it to the sentence. If her husband is not a football player, then she still has a husband. So the proposition in Q will not be false because it is still true for this. And the last rule is if Q is true, then P could be true or false okay we'll apply it to the sentence if she has a husband then her husband can be a football player or not so if these rules can be fulfilled so it means that the relation of these two sentences is presupposition okay that's all for today thank you very much